Good evening and welcome to Plain Talk. Thank you for joining me. My, my name is Christopher Ram. I have as my guest this evening former Prime Minister Hamilton Green, a long serving political activist. He's been in the National Assembly for several, several years, but even before that, he was engaged in political activities in, as a member, leading member of the People's National Congress, later PNCR. He had also formed his own political party, Good and Green for Guyana, GGG. <laughs> so let's remember where this green came from. <laughs> Mr. Green, welcome to Plain Talk. Thank you very much. And may I offer you the best wishes for the new year? You and, and the viewers, and of family, course. And the viewers. Thank you very much, and many happy returns. Now, <clears throat> you've been an activist since the 50s, Yes. If, I, if my reading is correct. What keeps you going uh, in political terms? Because we have not yet fulfilled, for me, our dreams for a good Guyana, a united Guyana. Uh, remember, we have on our motto, one people, one nation, one destiny. We'll still to achieve that objective, that dream. And I believe that in spite of the fact that I've technically retired, I still have a role to play. People come to see me almost on a daily basis. And I would like to be able to advise young and old uh, so that we achieve that objective of our motto of getting people to work together in the interest of this country. Funny, you've taken me quite, take the program by, by, by surprise here. You, you advanced it quite significantly. Because one of the issues I was going to talk about is um, constitutional reform, this business of uh, division polarization in our society. There's a view that we are as polarized now as we've ever been. Do you subscribe to that? And if you don't, what, make, what gives you that hope? And if you do, I what's don't, your fear? I don't think we're as polarized as we were. I lived through the 50s and the 60s. When that polarization manifests itself in violence, I don't but think... But you could have polarization without... I'm, outright violence I'm, like I'm, we had I'm, in the 60s. I'm coming to that. And we have a cadre of young people who are a little confused. And because they don't know the history, they have not been taught it in the appropriate communities, and parents don't talk to children these days. Well, which history? Do you want them to, 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 to know the history of, of that serious polarization and ethnic and racial violence that we had in If you sixes. don't know where you came from, you don't know where you are. And I believe we lack the intellectual vigor to advance to fulfill your dreams. We need to know all of our history. But isn't it a bigger problem, not so much we don't know where we came from, but rather where we want to go? I think in general terms, people know where they want to go. It's based on banal. People want a better life. The president himself has talked of a good life. Uh, that, of course... Yeah, but that's not a philosophy, that, or, or, unless you're hedonistic. No, but it is... L it life is, is more than just being a good life, it in, is, in the national scheme of things. It identifies the road you want to traverse. Yes. It is but, but, but you've come out of an ideological and a base organization. Yes. Um, you come out from an era where people took positions, whether on national issues or international issues. You don't see that kind of thing anymore. That has to do with what happened um, after the Cold War. Countries like Guyana felt uncomfortable, for whatever reason, to identify their way forward in ideological terms. Uh, even the big communists don't talk about socialism these days. It's, it's a pity because I think you need an ideology like religion. You need something to guide your responses to the realities of life. So it's, it's not saying we're like a lost, we, we, we are lost? I'm an optimist. I won't say we're lost. Yeah, but we, if, we, if we, we don't know, if we don't have no fi um, ideology, no philosophy, no guiding light, if you were to ask, well, 
which political leader? Now we, we, we go back to, to to your days, and I don't mean that um, in any negative sense. But you had serious dominant political figures. You knew where they stood on national issues, on international issues, <coughs> on state ownership, on social values and direction. But Chris, you don't have that kind of thing anymore. Yes, but Chris, you must remember that all of that you talked about was encased, embodied in what was happening at a global level. Uh, too many of us tend to treat this in compartments, but I don't think a lot of people, young and old, realize the massive impact that the Cold War had between 1946 and 1985 when Gorbachev attempted to dismantle the Soviet Union. That is what drove, that's what caused the division between Borum and Jagan, for example. How you respond to the international community. Uh, what was socialism? Which, what, what you're saying, within the, within the period or after the period, that, that caused the schism? It was because a, they parted during, during you, the Cold You remember that when uh, Stalin, Churchill, and um, Roosevelt mm -hmm. met at Yalta. Yes. It was a divided world. Yes. Um, church, um, Roosevelt died on the 12th of April, 1945, just before the war was officially mm -hmm. ended. Churchill lost his elections. So Stalin had to deal with two new conferees, uh, Attlee of Great Britain and Truman. Um, some describe it as maverick. And that is what triggered the Cold War, exacerbated the situation, and conditioned ideological responses by small countries like Guyana. But, and that but went on for three, four generations. Yeah, but we had it. Look, we had, whether rightly, wrongly, misguidedly, or idealistically, you had top ideologues throughout the Caribbean. Of course. Um, did this suddenly disappear? And I, you know, I don't necessarily want to call names, but we, we, we had a, a full team. A full card of people. Of, of, of socialists and radical socialists. Um, you had Jamaica, you had Grenada, of course. <laughs> Trinidad, even Barbados, Bobby well, Clark, and uh, well, yeah, uh, a maverick. But you, you had them. How come? And the Caribbean, how, and, and, the, and the Latin American yeah. countries. How come perestroika ca cause all these people to just disappear, or they, to lose their values? They didn't lose their values. So how many them? They lost their focus in terms of national development. <laughs> Let me give an example. Uh, come back to Bonham and Jagan. When Burnham cautioned Jagan that, look, our goal is independence. As we say in Guyana, hand in tiger mouth, party head. Because Chedi was this severe ideologue, believed in the Soviet Union, the communist philosophy, he didn't accept Burnham's caution because Burnham was no fool. Burnham knew that he had to step back to be a nice boy to get independence. So that characterized the situation then. And that happened in Trinidad, Barbados, Jamaica. That's how Jamaica got independence before Guyana. Nkrumah got independence because he stepped back. You probably know that when Jagan and Burnham after the suspension in 53, went to India, to Ghana, the boy said, look, Skipper, in the hands of the British and the Americans. Um, don't fight up. Don't deal with this ideological position. You had a man called Joseph McCarthy in the United States. But I'm not talking about then. I'm talking about later. Why did we abandon it when our country had long gained independence? In the 80s, we were all independent. Yeah. So we didn't, uh, our hands, even a tiger's mouth is a different tiger's mouth. Is the, the Western capitalists maybe? But n certainly not, not the, the type you're talking about. Um, you did, you, you, there's a new generation as well, you know. A lot of old chaps passed on. 
um, took a back seat. And a number of the young leaders... You didn't pass on. Why didn't you, why, why didn't you pass on your ideas and, 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 and the, the values and, you, and the philosophies? You know, post Bonham, they might say I had my own problems on that same issue. Yeah, we're going to get there. <laughs> now, I, I want to get back to it. You've had a long career, very long career. Um, in terms of activity, I meant. Yeah. You must have had some depressingly low points and ecstatically high points. Give me a couple of examples, assuming that you had those. The low points were between 61, 64, when we tried to deal with the racial problem, the violence, and the fact that the PNC took the position that we could not afford to have this polarization of races for a number of reasons, ideological for one thing, and the fact that it didn't benefit the PNC, I'll be quite frank with you, apart from principles, while on the other hand you had the PP who was pushing up on jab because they felt... Is that a fair comment? We always hear that, but there's no, there's no real historical record of that. Oh yes. That the PPP was pushing. And I, 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 is, I, isn't this a trap we face though, Mr. Green? That as soon as we start talking, we, we start setting up these camps. PPP, PNC, Indians, Afro. It was that, that doesn't get us any, it's real, but it doesn't get us anywhere now. No, but you're dealing with the reality as it was then. Yeah, but it's, it's, it can't be one-sided. No. <laughs> that the PNC were all good guys and the PPP were all bad guys. I never said we were all good guys. No, I that the PNC, PNC wanted to hold the country together, but the PPP was doing the opposite. Or, or somebody must have been causing it. So who was causing it? Burnham wanted unity. Burnham wanted to bring the races together because at a political level, it didn't make sense to have this division exist. And, but the other side pushed it. So you're saying the other side did not want national unity? Jagan did not want national unity? He wanted it on his terms, where they could have a dominant numerical Indian group, irrespective of ideology. You see, if you, see, if you examine the programs that Burnham set out, it would have benefited the indo guyanese more than the afro guyanese and that's the irony of our situation I, back I, in the 50s um <laughs> you'd have to explain that because that's that's not evidenced by the empirical data of course where when when born to about feet clothes and house yes the people already planting were majority indians well, Bono want to ban. But that, again, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm old myself. I'm not no. as senior as you are. But Bono also said, look, just your kitchen garden. He wanted urban agriculture as well. So he wasn't only talking about rural agriculture. You saw about both. He was talking about, exactly. And beyond that, he was talking about ensuring that in the rural communities, we produce enough food to feed ourselves and did not have to rely on imported food. That would have benefited the people who were planting in the rural communities. But it would have benefited everybody because, as I said, the, he, he was talking. And, you know, there's this, sometimes it's, it's not entirely accurate that only Indians are in agriculture. You know the East Coast box. There's a lot of afro Guyanese yeah. who were engaged in agriculture. We remember that time, Gaisuko and the plantocracy set out to flood out um, black villages as part of the... I remember long acrimonious meetings with Harold Davis, the chain of Gaisuko at the time. But, but so you're <coughs> saying Harold Davis, who was appointed by the PNC to head Gaisuko, systematically sought to flood out no, no. Black no. Let agricultural me, areas? Let me put it less dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. That's why I use the word plantocracy initially. Uh -huh. And the discussions, part of some of which I witnessed, had to do with Harold Davis in his official capacity, carrying out the policies of the then plantocracy, which we inherited. For example, when the estates No, but Harold Davis was chairman of Gaisuko yeah, but you're, you're, after... You're not, making, you're not listening to the point I'm making. 
So Dave, who is the planter of Christina? Dave, Dave, Davis then. was trapped. He had to produce sugar in circumstances where he had to flood out that uh, contiguous um, villages so that I get my sugar. Uh, I had to, the whole canal system had to be reconfigured. All right, I want to get on because uh, I don't want us to get <coughs> stuck in this mm -hmm. PPPNC. When I asked you about high points and low points, I was talking about you personally, Hamilton Green. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the low points? You've, you, you've had serious accusations made against you, as you know. Um, you were the subject of, a, I, I think, a commission of inquiry, mm -hmm. whatever by whatever name. Um, you were also appointed prime minister. So the, I'm talking about your own self and your own career and your own performance. High points were when I was given the task to deal with the infrastructure, health, housing, and labor. Um, when I took part with my first wife, the whole question of Carifesta, and we brought a Caribbean flavor to Guyana at a time when it was a bit of a strain as a result of the world situation. And we did a lot of work, we traveled. Uh, in fact, as I told you up to recently, I got a um, seed out of Africa with a steel pan, mm -hmm. which we took in 73 to Lagos with Leonard Dolphin, Frank Pilgrim, Shirley Field Ridley, and others. And it is still there. Those were the high points. And at the time when we thought we could make agriculture meaningful, there were some serious mistakes. Bonham would, didn't have a lot of patience. When we thought we could, say, ban wheat and flour to give rice flour a chance to flourish, um, we'll ban in apples, uh, grapes, and those things. Those were good, good thoughts, but we didn't give people enough time to simulate those ideas and those ideals. I'll tell you a story about that. As a young man growing up in Charleston, all boys song, I couldn't imagine going to bed Christmas Eve night without apples in the house. And walnuts. <laughs> and walnuts. <laughs> but when my <clears throat> father-in-law died, I took my two girls to the relatives in New York, and they brought a tray with apples, grapes, and some other imported fruit. Say, look, we know you don't get this at home. The young they didn't want it? No, the young girls in Texas now bit it and say, how many mangoes and it's apodillas. That, didn't, that couldn't happen in my day. But I give that an example to show we were succeeding. We were succeeding. So if you were succeeding, why did, why did the party reverse everything? Well, that came under that FCH. That, that, that's a long story. Happened, no, no, no. I want you to answer. That, that happened to the demise in 8 to 5. Yes, but... When a Hoyt felt that he should be popular by reversing or restricting some of Barnum's ideas, I thought it was a mistake, and that's why he and I had serious difficulties. How uh, serious were those difficulties? Very serious. I mean, you, you, you recall that meeting by the well. Oh, you, you remember that? I was there. <laughs> really? Elvin McDavid took me to that meeting. And boy, okay. that, was, that was a charged atmosphere. Ferocious meeting. Absolutely. And well, after that, you probably know. That was, that was bitterness. That was real bitterness. Yeah, because Hoyt did not listen to me. I point out to him that Modif because by then he had Gorbachev and uh, Perestroika. Mm -hmm. Pre Perestroika. Well, I said, look, let's give this thing a chance, modify it, but just don't cut things out like that. Because he felt he could get the Indian votes. But you're personalizing it again. You say Hoyt. But surely the party had to go along with it. Yes. So they did. Not so why why are you singing not, not why are you singing a, not point? entirely that's why the party has serious problems at that time very serious problems as is known to all and sundry all the the, the left wingers um including uh Ranji Chani, mark, the, david. mark david what happened with them they were all sidelined 
But these are strong, independent intellectuals, heavyweights by any measure. You remember in the situation of Ghana then, up to before we devised this coalition, the party lead and president had enormous powers, both of persuasion and the constitutional authority, both within the party constitution and the national constitution. Do you get the impression, and now I'm personalizing, that Hoyt was just waiting his turn to upturn and upend Burnham? I won't put it as crudely as that. That's not crude, man. I put it that, that, that's put it very crudely. Uh, Hoyt because he I, did it almost instantaneously. I th to give him some credit, he thought he was doing what was good for the party and the country and to deal with what he assumed was the ethnic difficulty. For example, when we restricted flour, people saw it as an anti-Indian uh, event uh, because they say Indians, at, we point out in the, the parts of India where people didn't see wheat and flour. Mm -hmm. And so, in fairness to Hoyt, and... First time you use such words about Desmond Hoyt? In fairness to Hoyt? I'm a fair <laughs> man, you know. <laughs> Go he, he, I believe he felt, even though I advised him against it, I said, that will not appease. You've got to work on a PR program. Uh, we had people like Prof. Uh, Dr. Trotz who had started work to produce a rice flour mm -hmm. that could be used for routine and those things. But those things take time. But he didn't want to take the chance to go into an elections with this hostility uh, that was a consequence of Burnham's policies. You know, we hear a lot now, particularly since the coalition and David Granger uh, has become president. I hope you said coalition, not collision. No, coalition. <laughs> coalition. <laughs> About Burnham and Burnhamite. What does the term Burnhamite mean? It means those who subscribe to Burnham's ideological position, subscribe to his modus operandi, and subscribe to his view of the wider world of So we're talking about FCH, Feed Clothing uh, House. FCH, yes, that's part of it. We're talking about National Service. Yes, very important. We're talking. There again, I uh, had difficulty. We're talking, we, we're talking about a strong anti imperialist western right right uh, international posture yes you remember that time there was a lot of pressure on small countries like Guyana and Hoyt thought he would take the easier way out at a time when the United States was set against any country uh, by then we had been supporting Cuba we had been established we had established relationship with Libya, uh, the East, scholarships to Soviet Union, uh, to Cuba, and Hoyt felt that those were things that did not serve us well. So you would consider yourself Bonamite? Absolutely. The, you're in support of national service? Absolutely. I think it's a monumental mistake we made. Mandatory national service? Mandatory against the bad word. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, but you, you can't tell me. <laughs> you use the word, you know. Yeah, well, I'm using it. In some sense. But if it's not mandatory, is, can, is it going to succeed? I think so. Because people have already started to well, let's put see the value of it. Okay. But we talk about it. If you have a crisis in the so-called democratic countries, in the United States, that's how Muhammad Ali lost his title. But... But it's mandatory. President Granger sometimes claimed to be Bonamite, but yet he doesn't go with this. Well, well, Granger, with, with, with Granger is service. in office and he has to thread cautiously. One of, one of the... He's head of a coalition, you know. Yeah, yeah but as and you it's, said... it's five parties. So and his wisdom suggests he has to... Only two, give, really, give sig only really two really significant parties, you know that. <laughs> but, but that's okay, another, we're that's talking... That's another story. We're talking... Bornemite. <coughs> Nationalization. This 
we, we, we no longer have, we don't seem to care about does national a, ownership that, of, of principal resources. Does that an issue now, except for oil, with oil? But when Burnham uh, took bauxite and sugar, that took a lot of courage, and within the party, it divided the party at a certain point. Um, people like Ptolemy Reed, Hamilton Green, stood firm behind uh, Hubert Jack, behind Burnham, well, on the issue of nationalization. It, it, of, it of course requires a, a, a greater kind of analysis. Was it the principle of nationalization or a recognition or fear that, look, we are biting off more than we can chew. We can't manage these operations with our limited resources. I said earlier, Bernard was an impatient man. I've said so publicly on two occasions. Burnham didn't have the patience to allow his own colleagues time to understand what he's trying to do. He wants to get things done quickly. And I think that was Burnham's undoing. And I've said so on many occasions. It's not what he did. It's the speed with which he wants to get it done. Nationalization is one. Um, you remember he led the way in many areas when the other Caribbean countries were afraid. Take China. We are very excited about relations with China. When China came to the cabinet, there were two people who supported Burnham, Tosman Reed and Hamilton Green. The rest were afraid, just don't, don't touch China now. I give this as an example. Today, China has provided a lot of assistance to us. Um, every story has two sides. It has a plus and a minus. Some of the goods coming in aren't the best, but that's another story. Some of the practices aren't the best either. That's, that's also true. But remember, China is a big... <laughs> China, China has, I believe, uh, a take on their place in the world. That they want to, to return to the leadership, which they, which they enjoyed a couple of centuries ago. Exactly. And exactly. that's that, and as you know, China sees things in terms big terms, not not decades, but centuries. Yes. They draw a long bow. The the feed clothing holds program, desirable as it was didn't succeed. <coughs> they faltered because the reason I gave them a moment ago, we started planting cotton. Um, we started to produce our own local foods, which had a pressure both political and even among our own people that look, we can take this train of using rice flour. Um, Burnham started in housing schemes, got women involved, self-help, subsidized. Linden, we gave people land so that it's not a house alone. You have enough land to plant. That was Burnham's dream. It didn't succeed because we didn't have the resources. I remember there was intense and enormous pressure from the West against Burnham's um, program. But, but Burnham was a top-notch world leader in the non-aligned movement. Mm -hmm. He had Indira Gandhi, um, Kenneth Kaunda, all, all <coughs> the big names of the world. Big names. But they didn't have the guns nor the no, money. No, they may not have had the guns, but they had the courage and they had the leadership. Yes. Remember the non-aligned movement, for example. That was intended to say to the East and the West, look, we're going to go our own path. We're not going to follow the Soviets, nor the Americans or the British. But what happened to that? Why has the party turned its back on, on, on ownership, state ownership of things? Now, one of the things... We, we're part I, of a, 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 a group. Oh, come on. Come on. We, we did it a long time before that. One, the one thing you cannot 19, criticize Burnham for... Nothing you can criticize Burnham for. One thing you cannot criticize Burnham for. When he left this world, that left this country by his death. Guyana was owned by the Guyanese. Absolutely. We've had two parties, the PPP and the PNC. 
that have practically given this country away. Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> that is a matter that needs to be analyzed and discussed in extenso. I believe, and I'm not defending the post Burnham era, or even the PP, they've had to deal with what they perceive to be the reality of a very swift changing world. Is it a reality that you cannot, it's not that party loyalty must never be allowed to encroach on good professional management. And that's where both political parties, major political parties, have faltered badly. But management cannot be seen in isolation. No. I keep repeating this. One has it in the context of the, what the world was and the but, pressures on but, both sides. But, Hammy, you're, you're saying you have your, 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 your leadership, your shareholders, they set the parameters, but you leave management to manage. Take, take, Lindmine, mm -hmm. we screwed it up. We screwed up sugar. The PPP screwed up sugar. Yes. You know, and it's one of the great ironies. The PNC, which has to regard Linden as home. the cradle and home, has done so bad, has done so little for that place. Same thing with sugar. How do you explain that? There are two problems. <clears throat> Is it over love that you neglect? You put it nicely. In addition, we produced a group of men and women who didn't understand the nuances of management. And the politicians can do so much or no more. But, but again, Burnham's cabinet had some strong leaders, capable people. Ministers don't Jack was an extremely capable minis man. Ministers can do so much or no more. You, you've read the book by the British poet, um, public servant? Yes, minister? Oh, yes. <laughs> right. So <laughs> we suffer from that. The public servants say, yes, minister, but then they go off quietly and, and do their own thing, so to speak. Now, I never believe in, in, in ambushing guests on, on, on program. But I think it's beyond doubt that Barnum engage in manipulation, manipulating elections as well. The, the, the evidence is all they have. You know, uh, do you think we were badly, we, we've been hurt because of that? Do you think that is one of the, the, the serious negatives against Burnham? It's a negative against Burnham, but how justified is it? How you can see, you justify rigging? <coughs> well, let me finish. <laughs> in the election environment, uh -huh. We have a manipulation, but no party did what we did in 1961, take their concerns to the court. In 1961, we had a problem with the way the elections were conducted when Jagan was premier. We took the matter to court, six elections petitions. We lost five. One was successful. All these people who talk about manipulation, why have they used the court no, that's to true. vindicate their position? But, but, but I mean, I, I don't mean, propaganda is I, easy. No, no, no. Here. And that's my position. Here. Why I, have I, they used the court? But, but listen, the, the court courts. of public opinion, you know, you've seen the making of a president. And look, we are quarreling, we are arguing. But I, and I said, I don't believe in ambushing. But I have the table, I have the chart of results here. Look at, look at this. Look. You, you miniaturize the PPP. You know the story, man. <laughs> and you know what I have against you? you know Let me tell you this. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you this. You didn't want to accept the 1992 election results. That's, that was the word. Is that correct? And that's why you and Hoyt had this big no, fall, we had, fall out. We had disagreement long before that. <laughs> <coughs> I'll tell you what. We had disagreement on several uh, several years. First of all, I had difficulty with Carter's intervention. Mm-hmm. Had a difficulty Which had to do with free and fair elections, though. No, no, no. Why? Had to do with changing perceptions. I'll give you one example. Carter pressed Hoyt. By the way, I provided you with water. You no, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Carter pressed Hoyt. I'm giving one example. Sure. To abandon overseas vote. I said, right, look, if there's a problem with the list, let's clean it up. 
but don't let us abandon overseas votes. Voting for two reasons. Out there you had people who were concerned with what's happening in Guyana. Um, Ram Karan is now, what's his name? Not Boise, um, Ralph. Ralph is now arguing it was unconstitutional for us to have abandoned overseas voting. And I agree with him. And that's the big issue I had with Hoyt and Carter. But with the result, he never allowed me to talk to Carter. The first time I met Carter face to face was when I visited Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest issue. And that was where the PNC raked in a substantial number my, of my, my question, though, my, my question, Hami, is whether you think the party still s suffers from that reputation. Of course, perceptions carry on for generations. It's a perception, whether it's real or not, it's a perception. <laughs> As and I tell you, th th this is not, these are the re re results. You can't move what you've done. You move the PPP from from what, 45.8% to 15%. I mean, that's, that's, that's so unreal. You remember, <coughs> in the interim, a lot of people in the rural areas and urban areas said they wanted to vote for the PNC. We had a simple technique. Ram said, you're going to vote for me. Give me a proxy. And that was used extensively. <laughs> now, what you want to call that? I, as I said, I, I, I was in charge of that operation, so I know what I'm talking about. I, I, we, all we're talking about is, is, is how this has... Plus has the overseas vote. And you know, the making of a prime minister. I you know... I haven't seen it. Oh, how many since 1960? I saw that thing in... I refuse to look at it. No, but it's... <laughs> no, and you won't <laughs> feature... I don't think you were featured in it. The making of a... I was a Yeah, they, you might have been, you know. I hope no, no, but was Burnham. Was making Prime Minister Burnham. <laughs> no, no, no. It, I was in London at the time. Okay. I felt bad because it was essentially about London. But let's, let's go on. The question of constitutional reform. Now, we have moved <coughs> from one of the major things. We moved from the, the ceremonial head mm -hmm. of state mm -hmm. to executive. now an executive president. That's at the executive level. Parliament remains essentially the same, except how it is elected. It has moved from, and when you, when you talk about the, the 1961 elections and the election petitions, mm -hmm. well, I think Petrie was one, um, you remember one of the cases. It's, it's, re it's recorded in the law report. We've now gone the proportional representation. That happened in 64. That happened in 64. And um, for good reasons. <laughs> I can give you the background. The, the, well, the good re we, we know the... <laughs> I was intimately involved in the decisions. You weren't at Lancaster House, though, were you? No, I was at the... That decision was made at Lancaster House, yes, wasn't it? Yes, 63. I was at the 65 conference when the date when the penance was set. Mm. But I was part of the inner circle that discussed but, okay. how we deal with it. Yeah. The, the, um, the question of the constitutional reform. Do you think the current constitution that we have contributes to the bifurcation, the division we have in our political and therefore in our social uh, I, milieu? I, I don't share those views, you know. A lot no, it's a question. No, it's not a no, no I, I don't think so. I'll tell you why. If you look at constitutions globally, a lot depends not so much on the details of the constitution, but how the people, the leaders, interpret the constitution and manage it. If you have people who are decent, basically, you know, Britain ruled the world without a written constitution. Without a written constitution, but they had strong conventions. I'm coming to that. What we need in this country today are conventions and men and women with integrity to respect the basis, the gravamen of what good law is, what justice is, and what decency is all about. But are you suggesting we don't have those? And if we don't have those, is it that we don't have those in the political area or we don't have those at the whole level of the whole society? The whole society needs to be 
I, in 1992, I called for moral and spiritual revival. It was oh, yeah, remember that. It was not a joke. <laughs> it was because... And the Jushi and so I, on? Hmm? Have you moved on from those things? The Jushi? Uh -huh. No, the Jushi is another story. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I still feel... You've moved around a bit, you know. <laughs> That's why I survived. Yeah, That's why I you survived. You've formed party to fight the PNC. Well, it wasn't a fight the PNC, it was a fight the heart. I remained in my heart of PNC all the time. That's why I was able to beat Hoyt in Georgetown. Because the people saw me. But then the party disintegrated. Gigi disintegrated. No, once Hoyt died, uh, my place in the PNC was assured, it was obvious. I never left the PNC in my heart. I, as you know, as a young man, worked in the difficult days when people threw bombs and things at my home. I made sacrifices. Your home Personal. itself wasn't bombed, was it? Yes. In when? In which year? In 1962. Yeah. China bombs and bombs were thrown at my home. Now, and we know by who. So you're saying, you're saying, you don't have a problem with this constitution? No, it's, it's... So this, this commitment by the APNU plus AFC for constitution reform is crazy. If, if you're happy with it, why, why have, is that, why, why is, reform it? It's not crazy. One group in the coalition is pushing for it. I suppose Granger is a decent man. He has to listen. He has to look at it. Um, find out what it is they're concerned about. For me, I'm repeating myself. What is important is the way the constitution is handled by the leaders. But well, let me, a let minister, me, let me a minister must ensure integrity, justice, parity. Well, we we've always been short of those qualities, always been. Um, and, and you're talking well, about society, interpreting. When, when President Granger said the other day, the Chief Justice has her opinion, and he has his. You don't treat a, 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 a ruling from the from the senior judge that way, can you? Can you? You, you can't have democracy. You, you can't have rule of law that way. Well, we have the three branches, the judiciary, the executive, and the parliament. Yeah, but you can keep your views to yourself. But, but when, when the court speaks, who <coughs> interprets the constitution? It's clear who interprets the constitution, the isn't court, it? The court. the court does. Well, I suppose in the circumstances, um, the president has expressed a personal view. Which you may criticize that. But, but does not undermine the constitution and undermine the rule of law it doesn't. and the separation of powers? Because you express a view. But the court doesn't express it. But you don't do anything court to change give, it. Court gives judgment. Court doesn't express opinion. A court gives judgment. But you're a lawyer. Um, no, you don't have to be a lawyer for that. The president must have had good reasons for making that remark. We all... Uh, yeah, but c is, is it then that it's too subtle, that people misread these things, that one has to be more careful? I accept that. I accept that. But I don't think his intentions were evil, nor to downgrade the judiciary. Granger is not that kind of person. You are not we, in favor. We, 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 all, we all make remarks which we should not from time to time. You are not, therefore, in favor of any constitutional reform. I don't think it's necessary. We need, we, for me, we need to get on with getting the economy in place, getting the education system um, back on track, national service, getting young people trained so that <clears throat> we inject a strong moral component to our society from top to bottom. And you're advocating the return of overseas voting as well? Overseas voting and national service. You're not, when it comes to nationalization and so on, you've abandoned that as, as a, a national goal. Well, if you talk State about ownership of key. What, what, you, what, you used to, what we used to call it, you know, those uh, commanding heights of the economy. No, that's Chinese words. <laughs> <laughs> that's Chinese words. And he took it to, to, to the other extreme. That's why he had no choice but to support Burnham in Parliament <coughs> when it came to sugar and bauxite. Yes. Again, commanding heights of the economy was Chedi's take 
on what a government should do. But governments all over the world in, in small countries have changed. They've had to change. But, but tell me something. Because you have the Goliaths, you know. No, but if you've got... Bauxite is one of your key resources. Mm -hmm. It's been for over a century, mm -hmm. easily. You get little revenue from that commodity. Well, as I understand... Is something wrong with, with, with how we, we deal with it? What is happening now, there is a co cooperation between private enterprise and the government to bring bauxite back on stream. Remember that it was not so much to fall. How are you gonna, what are you going to do? You're going to take it, take it back from the Chinese and the Russians? How are you going to do it? They don't have it yet. I mean, Roussel and, and, and um, the, the Chinese company? It, it's... it's, it's, it's uh, Both sides? You, how do you mean they don't have it yet, I mean? It's part of a government. The government is involved. Which government? The Ghana government. In Roussel? That's my understanding. So they are responsible for keeping the workers and the unions out? No. No, but they, you they, can't have your cake and eat it. They have not abandoned the idea of state control. It's, it's a mechanism to get the industry moving. Well, let, 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 let me give you another example. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you're getting moving by... You, you're not getting any revenue of it. You would have thought... But what's the alternative well, in our circumstances? Linden. Linden should have been one of the better developed areas. Linden should have got a bigger take from bauxite. But if, if, you, if you don't get any revenue, what do you do? But let me give you another one. Let me give you another don't, one. Don't, don't, don't leave Linden. Remember... Sure. Uh, what happened in the 80s with refractory bauxite and aluminium, the Chinese came on board with a new product mm -hmm. that virtually killed the bauxite industry. Uh, and by then, we did not get the support we expected from but the, the Soviet Union. But the mismanagement and the over... Like what's happening in sugar, when you have four or five times more people in an industry than you need to have. That's the point I made sometimes. We ministers can do so much. You have to depend on your managers. No, but, but your point is managers. You can remove them overnight. Not even overnight. You can remove them during the day. That's easier said than done. Oh, come on. In, in, in We've seen how politics in, work in, 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 in a democracy. Democracy has a serious disadvantage. No, 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 hold on. Democracy doesn't encroach in an employer's right to terminate the employment of a person. You can never, no court can force you to employ somebody. What the court can do is say, look, you've breached the contract, you've got to pay compensation. But they can't tell you you must keep that person in employment. But you're a lawyer. And no, but you're right. no, 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 I'm, I'm saying you're right. But we have a very slender society. And short of bringing expatriates, we have had to deal with the material we have. Remember, this is not a simple match, you know, um, Chris. A lot of our best brains left this country um, between the 80s, 90s, and... And they continue to leave now? Exactly. It's, it's a trend that has started. I mean, if you take... Burnham's dream for President's College. I checked the other day. Those are our brightest young kids. My daughter was one of them. They came back, offered menial jobs. But once they get settled in North America, in Europe, and the Caribbean, it's difficult for them to uproot and come back. And we need those skills. But you see, we come right back to this thing. Do we have, you talk about you're a Guyanese, you're PNC at heart. Mm -hmm. We need some Guyanese at heart who are going to say, look, my country is not the ideal place, but I want to make it better. And I'm prepared to make that sacrifice. Well, what we know, have now, what we have now, yeah, you have all these over 50s and over 60s and over 70s people <laughs> coming back and want to get to oppositions <laughs> and, and pushing out the young ones. Why don't we see that our policies are not working? The policies, might, you know, the problems change. But the bad decisions continue. It's that easy to get the young people back, you know, Chris. No, no, no. To prevent them from going. I don't know that any of us, you, myself, 
will have an easy answer for that. It's, it's, it's a universal problem. Well, you're a political guy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a no, but if you go to the United States, you see Guyanese, Jamaicans, Trinidadians, all over the place. But it's a problem. But look, we have not dealt with, we, we're not dealing with the criminal si crime situation. You and I talked earlier today about it, um, and I wouldn't go into details on that. But we're not doing the things that, that really ought to keep our people. I mean, I was staggered when I looked at the... At but what, what, what you suggest we do to keep our people? Give me ABC. Well, it's easy to say... We're not doing it, but what should we do that we have not done? Well, I certainly that we think can, uh, we, I, that we can do. I feasible. certainly think we can't keep blocking top positions by septuagenarians and octogenarians now, and keeping young people out. No, that's we, that, we have to you create. You have my question. We, but I'm telling you, that's what we got to do. We've got to create room at the top for these people. We also have. But they, they, they can't come in at the top. No, but they've got to see a career path they've got to see that look the conditions the social conditions <coughs> are right you know something i mean we uh, this government i hold against let, let me give you an example no let me make this point mm -hmm. they had a mortgage interest relief and I, I i thought that's one of the outstanding things ashni singh did mm -hmm. to get young people so that you can buy a home and you get good tax credits mm -hmm. this government has removed it and you know why because most of the people in the government, all the people, they have their homes, they don't understand what it is for these young professionals who have just finished their law exams, who have just finished their medical exam, maybe who have just finished their accounting exams, and want to make a contribution. We have to listen to the people. And I think that's one of the, the weaknesses we really do have. But programs such as this, and those of us who write in the media, must engage the government. The government is not perfect. And I know this government needs advice. But the government has to engage people now. We must engage the government. It, you, you got the horse and the cart wrong way. Not really, you know. So it we must to, go it, seeking. It, it has to go both We ways. must go seeking out the government. Anyway, we're talking, we were talking about nationalization and ownership. We had a brilliant opportunity recently. Our legislation passed in 1986, Hazel Paris, that says, look, when you give in a prospecting license, you can say, I want some state ownership. Trotman had, an, the PPP didn't avail themselves of it. They gave away that opportunity, among other things. APNU AFC had a golden opportunity mm -hmm. to say, look, because they've just given ExxonMobil, who else found oil, they gave them a prospecting license. It's a myth. We had a chance to get into the ownership of the petroleum of the, when it comes out. And we blew it. Well, Chris, you know, I is said it, to Is you, it that our politicians are backward? No, no. I said to you privately that one has to see oil in its wider context. As a young man, we heard of oil coming to Guyana. You know what happened in the 50s? We drilled in the Rupununi, closed down. Manganese and uh, Northwest, they said they were mining in an inverted cone. We had a problem with Venezuela and oil and drilling. I can't speak for the government as such. But it's my view they have been soft because Exxon at least has come on board to make oil a reality. But after. nobody's saying nobody's saying get rid of Exxon. It's not a, it's not no, no, a no. zero sum game. You, you, you now listen to me. In life, sometimes you've got to give more than you should. You don't give all. Well, I don't think boys are giving oil. I mean, well, that's an exaggeration. No, no, no. That's an exaggeration. No, but they, they're giving. To you get. give. You give all your opportunities. That's what you've given. You may not have given <coughs> everything. Of course, it's our oil. The I Petroleum Exploration Production Act makes it very clear. I the petroleum resources are owned by the I government. I haven't examined the license. I have my access to it. I'm taking a philosophical position that I know for all these years. 
burnham euro, Hoyt euro, Shady euro. We only hear about oil. This will come aboard with oil. What I'm saying, you can't expect perfection. And that oil is not going to spoil you. That's, know. that's, a, no, it's gone. It ain't going to spoil it. Gone. No, it can't go. Mr. Green, when oil is a non-renewable resource, I mean, it ain't gone. This license runs till 2056. Long after the oil, would, every drop of the oil would have been extracted. Anyway, <coughs> we got to bring this conversation to a close. <laughs> it's a real pleasure. I think we need to look at this thing in depth. All right. <laughs> you know, anytime you're welcome, sir. Thank you so anytime much. Anytime, Chris. Okay, all the best. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Operators and viewers, thank you. Good night. See you next week. But I, 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 um, I plan to engage Chuck on this question.